Yo, 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 what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Stickity Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOG. And uh, today, I'm actually coming at you guys with a really, really, really extremely fun, extremely cool deck. I nicknamed it Bad, <laughs> B-A-B. Uh, I like these 60-card mash with um, all these acronyms whose first letters kind of work together, like the die, B-I-E, Dogmatic Invoke Elvich, Dig, Dogmatic Invoke Generator, you know, we might even do, like, hmm, Bay, Buster Blader, Assault Mode, Eldritch, just because Bay, you know? <laughs> but anyways, this deck has a lot to offer for a little bit. Um, a lot of these cards have a good payout, just for one. Um, this deck is full of one-card combos. If, if it comes down to the Assault Mode cards, the Buster Blader cards, the Dogmatica cards, all of your starters are just one-card starters. One card gets you... A decent amount of interruptions. The Dogmaticas are typically what has the follow-ups and which will carry you in your grind game. The Assault Mode package is really, really strong. I want to get these cards because I want to start making Assault Mode decks. Cyber Reflector is just an insane card. It's literally a one-card combo. Just like, literally, this card by itself is uh, a Stardust Assault Mode, which is really, really good. Just normal with this, Effect, at the Beast, Beast Effect, Discard, at Assault Mode. Reveal Assault Mode, bring this back as a level 7. Boom! Stardust and Assault Mode off one card. This engine's so incredible. Assault Mode is actually viable, in my opinion. You can do it ASAP Naraki. It's a great way to play around cards like Droplets and Dark Ruler because you can summon this when you want. Um, the same thing with like the Shadal package that I play with the Dogmaticas and the fact that the Buster Blader engine, uh, pretty much you just drop it when you want. So this deck is very difficult to interact with when it comes to cards like Droplets and Dark Roller. It doesn't really get in a beard and you can obviously play through hand pass with all your other engines, uh, especially when some of your starters, you don't have to normal summon. It's just crazy. Uh, but your best inboard is achieved off three cards and the rest of the cards are whatever you want it to be. Uh, and that would be any access to Reflector and a Deer Servant, plus um, basically either Buster Whelp or even uh, Prologue. Like, if you access the Reflector, it'd have to be off E-Tail, your 1 for 1, and this could be your normal. Uh, but if not, even if you just open Trap Trick or Prologue, so you can see you have a lot of ways to access these cards. And the Deer's just kind of like the 3 of. But at the same time, you could just summon Ecclesia and actually use her effect to, um, you know, search Maximus if you had a target. That's something you could consider, you know, just like hindsight. But at the end of the day, Nadir Servant plus Reflector Access and Prologue Access equals out to a skill drain on your opponent and changing your monsters, your opponent's monsters to defense. Uh, in addition to that, you'll have an Omni Negate floater that negates the new updated text. It actually negates cards or effects, so it's a lot better than the old text. It's actually just like Cyber Dragon Infinity. Uh, it just keeps floating. And then you'll have Winda access with uh, a Flare to Leech. So you'll have like a Negate, Winda, which just cripples everything that's like super duper relevant. Omni Negate, just stick in there. And then on top of that, you have like your opponent can't activate effects basically. And if you're playing against Dragon Link, you don't even have to summon Buster Dragon. You can just literally have this card. But it's an insane opening. And everything you do is off one card. As you guys can see, it's 60 cards because I love my 60 card decks. This is just who I am as a person. I'm not about to change for nobody. So if y'all don't like 60, don't play it. But this is me. This is my preference. I win with 60 card decks. I kind of like prove that you don't have to play 40 to get a consistent deck. Um, so one of the appealing factors of this deck outside of the win conditions is that because all of your engines are one card combos, one card starters, you can play a lot of hand traps. So to make this deck meta relevant, obviously I have a lot of hand traps. So I have three Ash, three Bell, three Crow, three Meister, and three Nibiru. Nibiru is actually really good, contrary to what people believe. It's a really good card. It's good to stop Zeus when Zodiac try to go into Zeus. It's good against Virtual World. It's good against Drytron, especially like chaining it at the right time to the Ritual spell or just on Summon of Union Carrier before they equip the Dawn Knight. There's just so many ways that you can do your nib plays. Even if you give them Binta and Searches, if you deny them the bodies they need to tribute someone for Vanity's Ruler, that's another thing. Nib is good. You know, it's a really good card. And I wanted to pull more hand traps, and um, Nibiru really suited it. Because like, Droplets is more for uh, Drytron, as you can see. But Nibiru plus any of these other 12 hand traps is really strong against uh, Virtual World. Don't sleep on Nibiru against Virtual World. Sure, they can play around it, but... You're literally playing 15 hand traps. So if you draw Nibiru plus any other hand trap, you can end their turn. 
Uh, and then droplets, just in case you didn't draw any hand traps, but you draw this as your sixth card or in your opening hand. This card's amazing. You have a lot of traps that you can hit off of it. So you can hit BW, even if they have Chuchi up, because you could send a trap, a monster, and then boom. Uh, both the VFDs is off and the Chuchi can't respond. Uh, but past the 18 defensive cards, and this is a huge appealing factor for a deck like this when you can play 18 defensive cards and still have a consistent deck. That's amazing. Uh, reason being is because here are the starters. Three Prosperity. This is a new card um, out of the most recent set. I can't wait to get a play set of these. Uh, to be honest, I want to pull it out of the box tournaments that I'm entering because I don't ever want to buy this card. Uh, but this card, your extra deck is very um, flexible, very, very spacious. There's not a lot of uh, must-haves. Um, and the must-haves you can play at one. Like, you can actually play one Destruction Sword, Destroyer Swordsman, uh, one Buster Dragon, one Stardust, one Titanoclad. The only thing is, like, Elder, you want multiples of, right? But Omega recycles everything regardless. So you could easily just use Prosperity to just banish what you're not going to use, what you don't need, or extra copies of a card that you already have. So this card is a great starter because you can see six cards from your deck. You don't even draw. All you do is search. So the draw restriction that doesn't do anything. Three Tinky. Tinky is a one-card assault mode. Three Reflectors. Reflectors are one-card assault mode. Three Assault Sentinels, the Sentinels are one card Assault Mode. One for one in e telly one card Assault Mode. Uh, three, six, nine, eleven, very, very consistent starters here. Along with the Prosperity, that's 14 starters, but it gets better. We have 17 starters. The Buster Whoop is a one card combo. Normal Disc, gear up your Prologue, link it off, and then boom, you have instant Skrill Drain access. And the purpose of that is just to stall your opponent for a turn uh, so that you can build up your Critical Mass to OTK. Uh, and keep in mind, again, against Dragon Decks, this card can do bad all by itself. He doesn't need Buster Dragon to be that, basically, you know, DNA surgery for you. Uh, but 17 starters so far. And your normal summon either goes to this or this. But because you do have ways to special out Reflector, even though there are only two one-ofs, the simple fact is because you can do that, you can still, for example, like normal whelp, uh, get your skill drain, eat Tele out the Reflector, get your soul mode, and then drop in a deer, you know, and it's just crazy. Uh, moving past that, we're on 17 starters so far. Three Nadirs, that's 20 starters. Nadirs is just a broken card. And the reason why I like playing Flare de Lise is so that Ecclesia can threaten um, cards like um, Borlode Savage, cards like Dragoon, any Negator. To be honest, I want Ecclesia, Ecclesia to be able to threaten those kind of cards. That's why I like Knighted. That's what makes Ecclesia such a beast of a card because it forces negates out. Uh, whether you're uh, going first, it gets you interruptions. Going second, it can help you to dismantle those boards. So we're on 23 starters. 24 being Maximus if you have the right composition. This is just... You honestly don't like seeing multiple Soul Beasts even though he's a good card. Because like, if you're... For example, if your Reflector ever gets Ashed... You can Tinky out for the Beast, and then Tinky lets you play through the Ash, basically. You could use the Beast to grab the Assault Mode, activate, and now that he's engraved, you could reveal the Assault Mode, use Reflector, bring him back, and you play through the Ash, and now your Nadir is even more impactful. All your other cards are stronger. So, like, let's just say perfect world scenario. You eat Telly for Reflector, they Ash it, and you had a Tinky. Uh, you could literally just Tinky out the Assault Beast. So, like, having this as a one-of, makes reflector a one card combo but also it makes tinky able to play through an ash which is really cool so i just like it uh it's a one of though because like this card doesn't do anything by itself and that's the problem it's just a search target so that reflector is a one card combo you know reflector for assault assault for mode reveal special level seven boom you have stardust plus assault mode there's your package right there i'm uh, moving past that trap trick and prologue and punishment all can be engine starters which is really cool. But these are the valuable starters right here. This pile of cards, this 3, 6, 9, 12, 14, 17, 20, 23. These are the ideal ones. These are the more desirable cards right here. You want any one of these 23 is going to put you in a very favorable position after dropping a buttload of hand traps on your opponent. A hand trap with an, an impactful follow-up is always going to be so advantageous no matter what deck you're playing against. If you drop a few hand traps, simplify the game state, and you drop a blowout card, you slap an idiot servant on the board, or you normal summon a destruction whelp, or you slap an assault mode on the board, like it just your cards just become more valuable. Um, because your opponent's already on a diminishing standpoint for marginal like card economy, their their cards 
are basically diminishing for the simple fact that you've taken those resources from them and now you're dropping an impactful one card combo on the field and your cards are just getting more and more valuable because you're getting so much for so little you know whereas your opponent obviously you should have them in a, either a simplified game state or their board should be extremely mediocre and easy to push through your dogmatica cards give you the push the assault mode gives you the defense uh really just the protection and the buster blader just gives you a literal win condition like if your opponent loses the skill drain they just can't play and if they lose to winda they just can't play and uh, the Assault Mode package is not that OP. It's just one Omni Negate that floats. But it gives you protection so that all your other cards can resolve. Because you're resolving these cards on your opponent's turn. You're resolving Schism on your opponent's turn. You're resolving Punishment on your opponent's turn. You're resolving Prologue on your opponent's turn. So Assault Mode is the first thing you want to do. Just to get that Omni Negator out. So all your other stuff can resolve. Because all of your interactions happen on your opponent's turn. The whole gist of this deck is literally it's setting up on your turn to play on your opponent's turn that's how this deck works so getting past all these cards these are all pretty much starters except for this this card's not a starter uh these are undesirable so look you can easily cut this for example you can you can cut this to one you can cut this to one to decrease your bricks you can even only play one but like if you only play um one of the stardust assault modes the second one, you it will come up. You'll miss it. And then if you draw, now you have to play the quick play spell that lets you special, and it's treated as if Assault Mode activated it. The quick play spell also can banish itself to set an Assault Mode activate, which, again, makes you want to play more Stardust. So you should play at least two, and if you ever need it again, you can easily use Omega to recycle it back to your main deck and summon it again. So, yeah, like if you don't want to brick on Destruction Sword or Buster Blader, you can cut these down. But here is the problem you're going to run into. This is basically a two up. If you draw any one of these two cards, this entire engine is just for nothing. There's no point in playing it now. So you're already playing bricks and it sucks. Yeah, some win conditions come with bricks like Chism is a one of. But if you draw it, it doesn't do anything by itself, right? That's just how it is. There's sometimes a, a low risk, but an extremely high reward. And that's the instance here. So you can easily cut these to two, but I just don't recommend it because if you ever draw any one of them, you have a bunch of dead cards in your deck, and that, that just really sucks. So I'm just going to put those back where they belong. I just wanted to show that because some people be like, eh, it's too wicky. You know, you're playing two Stardust, and you're playing two Buster Bladas, and then on top of that, you're playing two Sword Memories. That's like six bricks. Six bricks in a 60-card deck? Come on now, man. That ain't bad. <laughs> that ain't bad. You got people playing three bricks in a 40-card deck in a Dragoon package. So come on, bro. Like... <laughs> It ain't that bad and the deck is really cool it's really fun it's worth trying you know at least try the deck before um you write it off because to be honest the deck is pretty crazy very very fun very creative um very interactive and proactive at the same time like this card is very proactive wind is a very proactive card preventing stuff from even occurring in the first place obviously that's proactive reactive would be cards like obviously punishment and the Stardust, the Assault Mode package, your hand traps, your droplets, etc. This deck is very consistent. There's a very seldom where you're not going to draw like gas. You might draw like maybe one or two starters, but like you have so many, you know what I mean? And Nadir Servant helps Trap Trick and Prologue to have more value because you can obviously dump that Titanic Light, have the Dragon Target you need to resolve the Buster Blader package. Because the Buster Blader package is really good. Like, Skill Drain is still a good card. No matter what deck it's up against, it's still a Skill Drain. And it also makes your opponent's uh, monsters go to defense. And this guy's huge. He's like a Boros Sword, essentially, when you really look at it that way. Just an amazing card. So that's the main deck. Oh, yeah, I do play Knighted. But I always play Knighted whenever I play Dogmatica because, like, I want my Dogmatica cards to always threaten Dragoon, to always threaten... Omni Negate, Boss Monsters from the Extra Deck, Infinity, Savage, Dragoon, Arclight, all those. If you don't play Knighted, like, I know that some people cut it. Now, your Ecclesia never is going to really bait a Dragoon. Like, <laughs> you can't. You can't get rid of Dragoon with an Ecclesia now because you're not playing literally one Knighted. It's sad. It's just a one-up that you should always play because it gives your Dogmatica cards more flexibility and more value. Uh, Maximus, while it can be risky sometimes, you can even just Nadir dump the um ob colone grab schism discard another random card and the cool thing is the whole assault mode package is darts and your buster blader cards like 
Um, oh, I'm sorry, never mind. It's just the uh, Soulmo package is dark. So, like, the reflector is a dark engraved. So, like, let's say you don't want to resolve Maximus and you're, you're, you're like, oh, what if they have targets? You need Deer, Dump, Op Colone, uh, grab your, your Shizum, discard another card. And that's after you obviously did your Assault Mode stuff. So, now you're going to have a dark engraved. So, the Op Colone plus the uh, dark obviously gets you into access regardless. So, you don't have to resolve Maximus. But for people that don't play targets, this card is just broken. Like, this card's way too good to not play. Uh, so that's the main deck. It's, like I said, really, really cool and really fun. Siding, I side just all blowouts. All of these are impactful. Cycle Reader. Even though I main droplets, since I'm playing 60, I want like nine blowouts for the Drytron matchup. Like, I, 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 don't get me wrong. I have 15 hand traps on top of that. Like, let's say I'm going second to get this Drytron, and I could side out my entire Buster, Buster Blader package. I could just take out like all three of these, uh, these two, that would be five. And then these two, that would be seven. And I can literally put in uh, three cycle readers, three drolls. And just so that I can literally side everything out, I could even just throw in like one evenly or one lightning storm just so that I don't draw any of these cards. So the Buster Blader package is literally your side out for when you're going second, whenever you need to put anything in here, because the Buster Blader package doesn't really do anything going second in the first place. It gives you the easiest way to side. So like even, oh, I'm sorry, I want to be more clear. Really, what you want to do, because, like, obviously, it's still a wing condition, is you want to, like, keep your whelps, right? Side out, like, one of this, one of this, uh, one of this, and, like, maybe, like, one whelp. And you'll still have the Buster Blitter package, but you'll have room to side your other cards, as well as, like, one Assault Mode, you know what I mean? So, like, it's pretty easy to side in this deck, because it's a 60-card deck, <laughs> and it has so many engines, and your engines have extra copies of cards that you don't need. You just play them, just in case they come up a second time, or you draw them. These cards, you can easily cut them. So going second, siding and all that, it's just really, really easy. And you don't really need to side anything going first since you have all these win conditions. You have Winda, Skill Drain, Omni Negates, and a buttload of hand traps. That's good against everything. So the extra deck, I played two of the Fusion, two of the Buster, his friend, his DNA Surgery homie. Uh, this card is really good if you play the actual Buster Blader deck because the follow-ups on this card are amazing. Uh, the Shadal Package, really, really good. I even thought about um putting in second um Octolone and then just throwing in a Shadal Aerial. So that way um what I can do is just punishment, dump Octolone, pop a monster, send Aerial, banish three. You know, it's another brick though, because Aerial is brick. Just just ideas. Uh two elders. We have Omega. Omega is just too good. Any Dogmatic variant should play this. This card is just way, way, way too good. It recycles your stuff. Like this guy goes in your grave, he's dead, uh like, you sided one out, or you drew one, one's in your hand now, you don't play the quick play, you're like, okay, Omega, put this back, Assault Mode, activate, bring it back out, you know, it's just, like, really, really, really good, Omega's amazing, as a utility card, and to summon him, like, even if this gets DD Crowed, and you just Omega return it to the grave, and then recycle it, it just, stuff like that, two Stardust Dragons, for the two Assault Modes, uh, Link Kribo, and two Titanic Clad, and you play like two of this, two of this, two of this, two of this, and two of this. So these are the easier cards to banish off prosperity. If you want to go for six, you can go one, two, three, four, five. And then you can go like six, or you can go like, uh, I don't think I'm going to need Omega. You know, it's it's like up to you. Uh, but it's really easy to go for six with prosperity, even though I typically go for three. It's up to you. This card also lets you obviously see your side deck. So that's the deck, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned from it. Um, I just think that Cyreflector Reflector is just way too broken. Like, as a card, like, this card is just so good. It's really good. It's also a one-card Needle Fiber combo. So even if you just wanted to use this as an engine, just as a Needle Fiber package, you know, it's good. It's good at a lot of stuff. It's, it's just, even in time, right? Like, let's say, let's say you wanted to play this deck competitively, and you were scared of going into time. Uh, you have consistent access to Scarlight uh, to literally just um, pop your other special summon monsters. So, like, obviously, when you commit to the Scarlight, you just need, like, an Ecclesia or, like, just other cards to commit to the field uh, so that you can just, like, nuke, boom, and then burn. You know what I mean? So it's just, just like this, you know? Stuff to think about, but our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord Jesus, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. God is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. 
And yeah, you guys, that's it. Try it, dude. Like this deck's really, really cool. <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, these are the kind of decks that I enjoy. I like making 60 card decks and looking more on the, um, I guess, exploitable side, just seeing what I can get to work. That's one of the funnest things about Yu-Gi-Oh! Building decks is almost just as fun as playing them. Put it that way. But yeah, peace out, you guys.